I can't believe we're talking about the Ku Klux Klan today. You know, that the current president of the United States was endorsed by the Ku Klux Klan, endorsed by David Duke. Um, and how did Donald Trump do that? Well, one of the ways was as leader of the birther movement. And this very much goes to what he represents today, right? He leads this movement. I mean, he talks about the media as being fake news. Um, well, it takes one to know one, right? This man, Donald Trump, for years tried to delegitimize President Barack Obama by saying he wasn't born in the United States as not a legitimate president. Now, whatever you think about President Obama's policies, you know, promised to close Guantanamo, didn't for eight years, expanded the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and the drone wars in Yemen and Somalia all over. President Obama laid the groundwork for what we're seeing today. He deported more immigrants, millions and millions of immigrants, more immigrants than any president in history. So there is plenty to criticize him about. But saying that he was not born in this country and that he is not a legitimate president is not one of those. And when I think of Donald Trump year after year saying, I have the evidence, I sent the investigators to Hawaii, never obviously showing it, and also talking about Barack Obama as a secret Muslim. Now this puts us all in a very difficult situation. We're supposed to say, no, no, he is not a Muslim. You know, put your own religion in that. For me, it's, oh no, don't worry, he's not Jewish. No, he is not a Hindu, he is not Christian, just you can rest assured, President Obama, and this is all ridiculous. There's nothing wrong with any of these religions or if you're an atheist or an agnostic. But what matters is telling the truth. And that dog whistle politics he engaged in appealed to a certain group of people, white supremacists, white nationalists, and that's how he built his base. And that is extremely frightening today when Donald Trump occupies the most powerful position on earth and in his first days in office, immediately attempted to institute a Muslim ban. Again, to other. That's what he was doing with Barack Obama. He could not be a citizen of this country because he is the other. And doing the same now with Muslims. Now, that's not my term, Muslim ban. That's President Trump's term. What he said over and over again during the campaign, we will ban all Muslims, or then we will ban most Muslims. Just put your religion into that. Fill in the blank to understand how discriminatory that is. Uh, you think he, when he announced for office in his tower in New York with paid actors applauding for him. So it's always interesting to see when he says, all these protests, who's paying for them? It's the way he thinks. But you think about that first speech when he announced for president calling Mexicans rapists. So he goes after the Mexicans. He goes after the Muslims. He goes after the media, right? Calls us the enemy of the people. Mexicans, Muslims, media. So Muslims says no refugees from seven majority Muslim countries. And that's stayed by a federal judge in Washington state to the shock of the president of the United States who calls him a so-called judge. And then when he instituted the second, attempted to institute the second Muslim ban with banning refugees from six majority Muslim countries, he dropped a rock from the list, a federal judge in Hawaii stayed the ban. And last week, the Attorney General of the United States, Jeff Sessions, said on a right-wing radio show, I cannot believe that a man on an island in the Pacific can stop the President of the United States. You know, I think the whole country is engaged in a civics lesson, from kindergartners to fifth graders to everyone in this country learning about the co-equal branches of government, right? Executive, legislative, judiciary, and I think that Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump should be a part of that education. <laughs>